Hey groups, good to see you all again. I hope you had a great Easter this past weekend and enjoyed some um, nice weather, uh, even though Michigan may have turned the tables on us again. Um, I am excited to introduce something new that is coming out that groups are getting to hear about first. Uh, we have got a Foundry app. Woohoo! So excited for this um, because this app is going to have a ton of information uh, that you'll be able to stay more informed with stuff that's going on in the church and be able to get information and resources way quicker than we hope you ever have. Um, so on the screen right now is going to be a QR code with some information. And if you want to take out your phones a minute, I'm going to give you just a bit to do this. Take out your phones and take a picture of this QR code. Um, what that's going to do is on your phone, then it's going to bring you to your app center and you'll probably need to log in with your Apple ID, which I always pretty much hand my phone to my wife. And I'm like, what is this? Can you fix this for me? And then uh, you'll download, it's called a Church Center app. Um, and once you're in that, it'll find the Foundry Church uh, for you. Um, and once you have that app downloaded, um, I believe it'll like log you right in with, with a profile. Um, if you're in groups, it means you have a profile at the Foundry Church. So you'll be able to do that. And we want groups to be able to get into this app first um, because over the course of the next few weeks, we're gonna be pushing this app in church uh, to get people to download it uh, because we believe that it matters to know who's worshiping with us and know who's in groups because we wanna know how we can help care for you guys more and be in better communication with each other with what's going on and how how we can help in your life and the things things that matter that are happening. There's a few few of the fun things that are going to be on it. You're there. You're going to have easier access to messages, and hopefully someday in the future we'll be able to have message notes on there that you can follow along with. Uh, your group's resources are going to be on there, so instead of grabbing questions or going online to find questions, you're just going to be be able to pop up the app, and your questions are going to be right on there. Um, there's even going to be a spot where you can. <clears throat> message the whole group, like just through the app. Um, and what's going to be, I think, most exciting is the way we check in. Uh, if you have kids and they go to shakeout or nursery, there's going to be really a seamless check-in process with this. You're going to be able to give in the app um, and also register for events that are coming up. So if you haven't done 101 or 201 or VBS, that's going to be coming up. We'll be pushing that soon. Uh, you'll be able to sign up for all of those things. So if, if you can, uh, we would so strongly appreciate you jumping onto this app, um, getting yourself familiar with it, because over the next few weeks, we're going to introduce the church to this. And as members in groups, uh, we, we do feel like you champion some of our stuff. So we want to make sure this gets in your hand first. And then when people are like, I don't know how this works, you can be like, oh, I do, because I've been in this already. Let me show you what this looks like. So as a group, everybody take out your phones, scan that app, um, take the next uh, five minutes to play around. I think there's even like a spot you can take a picture of yourself for the profile and you can be like, oh, there's me. And you can take a picture of yourself, put that on there. Um, explore the app and then uh, take some time and then we're gonna jump right into groups content for the week. All right, groups, for this week, we just got off of Holy Week and Easter, and we spent the last two weeks looking how death has been interrupted by Jesus Christ. Um, there have been so many uh, references throughout the Old Testament, so many Easter eggs, that it seems like God has hidden hints of who Jesus Christ was going to be and what he was going to do, and the redemptive work that he was going to be able to accomplish by what he did on the cross. And we just see that all being 
being played out um, on Easter, on the cross, and him rising from the dead, how death, that we were on this track from, from life, right? When, when the garden was, was made in the very beginning, there was life. And we were on the track to death. And because of the sin that we've committed, we're, we're on that track from life to death. But death has been interrupted because of what Jesus Christ did, his work on the cross and his redemption uh, by rising from the dead and the atonement for our sins that we see from this. So in Easter, we looked at that and how Jesus was the answer to all of those things. Um, and groups questions this week are going to look a little bit different. Um, kids, if you're in the room, we've got some kids questions that um, the adults can run you through. Um, but we're going to spend a little bit more time talking about, okay, now we have the truth. If we believe in Jesus Christ and we believe in his redemptive work on the cross, um, what does that mean for us? Right, what do we do with that now that we know that this story of the Bible has always pointed to Jesus? He's always been the one answer. Um, he's always been the plan. He's not been a plan B or C or D. Right? Jesus has been the plan. And if we believe those things to be true, uh, what does that mean for how we live our life? And how do we have conversations with people around us to point them to that same truth that we know? Um, so, Content's going to look a little bit different. We're going to have you uh, do a little bit more reading, hopefully a little bit more discussion today. Um, and I hope you're able to um, really enjoy the conversations that you guys have with each other today. So kids, if you're in the room, adults will run you through kids' questions. Um, but adults, uh, hang on tight and we'll start walking through some of this content. All right, I want to start out by reading 1 Peter 3, 15. Um, it says this, and it's the second part of 15. But in your hearts, revere, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. Um, we have just walked, like I said in, in the preview, right? We just walked through how Jesus Christ was the answer for the, a lot of things in the Old Testament. And the Bible is this continuous story of the culmination um, in the person and the work of Jesus Christ. Um, and on Sunday, we learned about the resurrection, the greatest moment in all of history. Um, but here's the deal. We need to know how to share that hope. The hope that we have in Jesus Christ. So here's the question I want you guys to start is, start with. Uh, question one, what is the gospel? Um, if you were asked by a coworker, a friend, a stranger, a child, a sibling, a parent, a boss, what is the gospel? How would you respond? All right, now that you have a bit of a definition for what you believe the gospel is, um, I want you to take some time practicing with your small group about sharing that gospel. Think about where to start and some of the benchmarks that you want to hit in that. Think about, uh, I, I think often to like a, a road trip. We recently went down to Florida um, and having an 18 month old in the car with us, Jalyn was very detailed about what it would look like to ride, right? Like we're going to need to stop every three hours and then we're going to need McKenna to walk around and we're going to have gas stops here. There were benchmarks Benchmarks that we were going to try and hit to make it for a smooth ride. And in the same way, when we think about the gospel message, there are benchmarks that we should have in our minds that are important that we want to make sure that we articulate well when, when we're having these conversations with people. So think about what landmarks needed to be included in that, where you're going to start things in the middle and then where you're going to finish. And I want you to decide as a small group, what does this look like? How are we going to do that? Um, maybe you partner up and you role play and you have this conversation back and forth where one person pretends uh, to not be a believer or pretends to be a coworker that doesn't know about Jesus Christ. Um, have some of those conversations together. And 
what I love about this is that we want groups to be a spot where you can grow together. Um, I would assume most people believe that are surrounding you right now believe that Jesus Christ is their Lord and Savior. Um, so this is a safe place to have these conversations. This is a safe place to try some things, uh, knowing that if you do fail, well, they're, they're people who love you and are probably not going to change your mind about Jesus because of your conversation that you're having, right? But these are you're surrounded by safe people right now. So I know something like this can seem like, super out of your comfort zone. But step out in faith in this and have conversations with, what would a conversation look like? What are the benchmarks? What do you want to hit? Are there some verses that remind you and point to the salvation that Jesus Christ offers for the world and God's goodness? Um, if you're following along in the, in the group's questions, there's a list of, I th- believe there's like 10, nine or 10 different verses in there that if you're struggling with this and you're like, I don't know how to share my faith well, and I don't know what those benchmarks are, maybe take a look at that list and pull from some of those and develop some benchmarks and things you would want to hit in that. Um, and so go ahead and do that, and then we'll wrap up um, after, after you have some conversation. And allow this to take some time. This can be 20, 30 minutes. Allow yourselves to maybe critique each other and be like, you know, this would be helpful if you said this at this point. Um, have some fun with it. All right, groups, to wrap up today, um, I want to lay out a bit of a challenge out here because I believe that for me personally, I struggle with this because I was raised in a Christian home, I went to a Christian school, and I was not surrounded by many people who are not believers. Um, So I, I often have a hard time with this, but I believe there are people out there that as we started this conversation, as maybe you you listen to the Easter message or the Monday, Thursday message, you felt God lay somebody on your heart and the Holy Spirit has kept that person on your heart. Maybe even in these conversations, you're like, I'm kind of picturing having this conversation about the gospel with this person. Um, If God has laid somebody on your heart, I want you to take some time with your group right now and pray for that person. Um, Pray that either they come to know God in some way and maybe Pray that uh, the Holy Spirit gives you courage to have that conversation if you're supposed to be that one. Um, Maybe for you, it's just saying the words, come and see. Right? Come and see. Uh, You may not feel comfortable telling the gospel message all the way through, um, but just tell them to come and see. Come see the God you serve. Come see Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, who gave you salvation. Um, Tell them some of your story. And I'd encourage you, take the step in faith this week and start that conversation. You never know what is going on behind the scenes in someone's life. And that may be the very thing that they need to tip them over the edge, to get them to come to church, to have that conversation about, hey, I've always wondered why you've been so happy. Is that, is that why? You live a different life than most people Tell me more about why you do that. Um, we are called to be the church. And I want to I wanna challenge groups more than ever in this. Go out and be the church. Don't just be the church in the small group where you're surrounded by like-minded believers. Go out and be the church in your community, with your family, if they're not all believers, in the grocery store when you're walking down the aisle. Be Jesus Christ to people because they need it now more than ever. Um, So don't take what you've learned this week and over the course of the past few weeks at church and just tuck it away. Um, Go out and do something with it. Uh, Groups, I, I cannot wait to hear how this goes for you. I know it's a stretch. I know it's going to be a challenge for some of you, but I believe that the Holy Spirit will give us courage when we need it the most. So go with that, and I hope you guys have a great week.